If you've never programmed in Java before, or even never programmed at all before, and you want to create your very first Java program and get it up and running, this is the video for you. You don't need any prior coding experience or Java knowledge. All you need is a computer. This video is for the absolute Java beginner starting from scratch who wants to get their very first Java program up and running. My name's John, I'm a lead Java software engineer and I love sharing what I've learned in a clear, understandable way. So if you like this video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss each new Java tutorial. I also have a full Java course available in the link down in the description if you're interested. Okay, so let's get started installing everything we're going to need to code and run our first Java program. The first thing we're going to need to install is called the JDK, the Java Development Kit. The JDK gives us everything we're going to need to take the Java source code that we're going to write and turn it into actual functional Java programs and give us the ability to run them. The link to download the JDK is down in the description. Currently at the time of this recording, you can see we're at a JDK version number 16. But whenever you're watching this, just go ahead and download whatever the most recent version is. So if we scroll down on this page, we can see all the different uh, options we have for downloading it. For me, I'm using Windows, so I'm going to click the Windows installer. Check the box and click the download button. If you're using Mac, go ahead and click the Mac installer. Whenever that's finished downloading, go ahead and open it up and it'll walk you through a normal installation process. Just click next. This will tell you where exactly it's going to install the JDK on your computer. So it's good to just take note of that in case you need to know later. You can just use the default location and click next. Now it's installing. That completed successfully, so we can go ahead and close that out. The second thing we're going to want to install is called an IDE, an Integrated Development Environment. So you could, if you really wanted, you could write all of your Java programs just in something like Notepad and use like command line tools with the JDK that we just installed to uh, build and run your Java programs. You can do that if you really want to, but an IDE just gives you a ton of tools that make developing your Java code a whole lot easier. One of the most popular IDEs and the IDE that I like and use the most is called Eclipse. There's a link down in the description to download that as well. It'll take you to this page here, so just go ahead and click on the download button, and then click the download button again here, and it'll start downloading. The Eclipse IDE is going to help us actually write our Java programs, and then the JDK that we installed is going to take the Java programs that we write and turn them into a format the computer can understand and run them. Download's complete. Let's click it to run it. This thing always looks like kind of a sideways gear face to me. When you run the installer, you're going to see this with a whole bunch of different options of what you can install. All you need is the very first one, the Eclipse IDE for Java developers. Don't worry about any of the other ones. That's the one you want. Click that. It should automatically find the location of the JDK that you've already installed. So you can go ahead and click install. Completed successfully. So let's click that launch button and get started with coding. Here it'll prompt you to select a directory to use for your workspace. This is just the file location where Eclipse will put all of your Java source code. I just use what it defaults to, but you can put in whatever directory you like and click launch. When it launches, you'll see this welcome page that you can just close out. When you get started using an IDE like Eclipse, all the different options can feel overwhelming at first, but for now you can just ignore most of it and just focus on the few simple things we have to do to create and run a Java program. In Eclipse, each program has to be inside a project. So the first thing we need to do is just create a new Java project. Since we don't currently have any projects, you could click this create a Java project here, but once you create your first project, this will go away. So let's go ahead and create a Java project the normal way. Go up to file and then new, Java project. You can name it whatever you like. Let's just say first Java project. You can uncheck here where it says create module info .java file. We won't need that. And then click finish. So over here is where we can find the first Java project that we created. This package explorer tab is where you're going to find all of your projects and individual Java program files that you create. So what we can do is click this little carrot to expand this project. And you'll see two folders inside, this JRE system library folder and the SRC folder, your source folder. The source folder is going to be the important one. That's where we're going to put all the source code for our Java program. So to create our first Java source code file in our project, we're gonna right click this source folder and then go to new and then class. For now, it's fine to think of a Java class as just a fancy name for a Java source code file. You can give it whatever name you like. We'll just call it first uh, Java program. You're also gonna wanna check this box where it says public static void main string args. We'll talk more about that in just a second. For now, go ahead and click finish and it'll create this first Java program dot Java file. Let's go ahead and blow this up a bit so you can see it better. Let's talk a little bit about what it automatically put in this file. At the very top here, we see this public class first Java program. This is just called a class declaration and every Java file will have it. It just says here is a Java file called first Java program. And then you see these curly braces here. Everything in this class is going to be enclosed 
between those curly braces. Next, we have this public static void main string args thing. There's a whole lot of complicated looking programming terms in it, but all you need to know for now is that it's called the main method. And inside this main methods curly braces is where you're going to put all the commands that you want to run for your program. And if you're too curious about what all of this stuff means, I have another video here fully explaining this main method. When it generates this file, you'll see this uh, to do auto generated method stub. This is what's called a comment. It's automatically generated and we don't need it. So we can just go ahead and uh, remove it. Inside this main method is where we're going to put all the commands that we want our program to run. When we tell it to run the program, it'll run through all the commands in our main method. And once it reaches the end of our main method, the program will end. The very first program everyone writes is just called hello world. So we'll do that now just because it's kind of a rite of passage. Everybody has to do it, but then we'll do something a little bit more interesting also. So this will just have the program print out the words hello world. Here's the command to have Java print out some text. It's system with a capital S dot out dot print ln, and then an open parentheses. And inside these parentheses is where you're going to put whatever text you would like the program to print out. And you'll have to put that text in quotes. So here we'll have in quotes, hello world. Then we have an end quote and a close parentheses, and then a semicolon at the end of the line. In Java, every single statement has to end with a semicolon. After you've typed that out, go over and click the Save button to save your program, and then click this green arrow, which is the Run button, that will run your program, so let's see what it does. All right, it printed out the words, Hello World. Congrats, you coded and ran your very first Java program. A few things to note, uh, in Eclipse, whenever you print something out in your Java programs, it's going to show up in this little window here called the console. You might hear this referred to as uh, the console output. Another thing is that Java is case sensitive, so if you happen to mess some of this up and make something capital that shouldn't be, you're going to get errors. But a cool thing about using an IDE like Eclipse is that if you make a mistake and code something that doesn't make sense in the Java language, like say we just have the print n instead of print ln, Eclipse gives us this like red squiggly line, kind of like if you misspell something in Word. So we know we have an error in our program and Eclipse even gives us some suggestions on how to fix it. So here it suggests, oh, we could change it to print ln and we can click it and it automatically fixes the code. Now that we've coded the hello world program, let's do something a little bit more interesting and uh, create two numbers and have Java add them together and tell us the total. So let's get rid of this hello world line. Now in programming, when we want to create something like a number or a string of letters or text, we use what's called a variable to hold that information. And to create a variable, we have to tell Java a few things. The first thing is we need to tell Java what type of information we want to store in this variable, and that's called the type. For a standard number, we can just use the int type, which stands for integer. This will hold any standard whole number, just not decimals or fractions or things like that. The next thing we need to tell Java is a name for the variable. It can be just about anything you want, but it should reflect what is actually being stored in the variable. So if we were using this int to store someone's age, we should probably call it something like age. But here, since we're just adding two numbers together, we can just call it uh, num1. Then we want to tell Java what we want the initial value of this variable to be. And this is called initializing a variable because we're giving it its initial value. Let's say we want to start num1 with a value of seven. All we have to do is say int num1 equals seven. This assigns the num1 variable the value of seven. And then like every Java statement, we need to end it with a semicolon. So next we wanna create our second number and we'll do it exactly the same way. We want another int variable and we'll call it num2 and we'll initialize it with the value of five semicolon to end the statement. So now all we've done is declared and initialize our two numbers. So what we can actually do is create a new int variable, we'll call it total, and we want to initialize its value to be the sum of those other two numbers. And to do that, we can just say num1 plus num2 and end with a semicolon. This will take the values that are currently assigned to num1 and num2, which are seven and five, and add them together and store that result in this total variable. So after this line in the program, this total variable will have the value of 12. Now we just need to print out the result. We'll print out the same way we did before with just system.out.println. So if we wanna print out this total variable, we'll just put in total. End it with a semicolon, that should be it. Let's go ahead and save and run it. Click run, and perfect, we get the result of 12. Notice that we didn't want to use quotes here like we did before when we were printing hello world. When you want to print the value of a variable, you don't use quotes. If you use quotes, Java assumes that you mean to print this actual text. So if you do put quotes in there and you save it and run that, Java will just print out the word total. Probably not what you want. All right, awesome. In just a few minutes, completely from scratch, you've been able to code and run your first Java program successfully. But of course, there's just so much more in Java to learn. So to continue your Java learning, be sure to check out my other beginner Java videos like creating a rock paper 
paper, scissors game or a number guessing game. Those are cool, fun projects that will keep you interested in having fun while learning Java. So keep coding and having fun. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.